What's up and welcome back. I'm still doing Oscar nominated films I've never seen and I'm trying to bounce around streaming services and find stuff on them uh, to qualify. So I wanted to tackle something on Tubi. Now Tubi's <laughs> Tubi's bench of audio bench of audio description right now is very very short, especially when it comes to I don't know uh, actual movies. Um, <laughs> it's it's a lot of stuff that I don't even know who's watching it. There are a couple of titles on there, like Zola. If Zola had been nominated, I would have loved to have watched Zola for this video. Um, but there isn't one. So, uh, no, no, you know, Oscar nominees with audio description on Tubi right now. Even if I were to rewatch something I'd already watched, there was nothing that had been nominated for an Oscar that currently has audio description. So, that being said, I had to pick something else that was on their streaming service. And I've never really wanted to watch this film. Uh, so I didn't really care whether or not it had audio description or not for my own purposes because... Um, I've actually tried to watch this film before, back in, when it came out in 1998, even before it, uh, you know, had an Oscar nomination, I rented it because I used to, you know, I knew I was into movies back then anyway as a teenager, so I was renting movies and bringing them home, um, as much as possible to try to get these, uh, you know, fil this film knowledge as quickly and, and quickly as possible, as quickly and in quantity as possible. And I read in this film and I turned it off. And I, I, I didn't make it honestly past like the first 10, 15 minutes of the film. Uh, when I first saw it, I was like, hey, this is, I don't want to watch this. Um, I still don't want to watch this film. To be totally honest, I, it has an 8.5 on IMDb and it's been lauded with a lot of things. Uh, and I know people are going to be like, does this make you uncomfortable? Yeah, it does. But also, I just don't, I don't think the way that it's shot and the way that it's approached is necessarily in an interesting, in a way that interests me in tackling what it wants to tackle. Um, so I'll talk about it, but this is American History X. Uh, it's, it was nominated for Best Actor for Edward Norton, um, and qualifies as that. And, uh, I, there's a very similar film that I think is a better film, and it was considered to be even more controversial than American History X, and I think it tackled it in a different way, uh, it has a different, uh, experience to it, and a different twist, and um, it's less about uh, a redemptive story. Uh, it doesn't have anything awkward like s serving three years in jail for killing two people. Um, <laughs> just, you know, where you, you're like, what? He's, he was gone for how long? <laughs> it's for, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, and that's The Believer, starring Ryan Gosling. So if I had to pick my let's tackle white supremacy drama, I would much rather talk about The Believer, which Ryan Gosling was not nominated for an Academy Award for, but probably should have been, um, than I would tackle this film. So, um, this, yeah, uh, I, I get what it's trying to do. It has a very interesting cast. Uh, other than Norton, there's Edward Furlong, who really hasn't been in anything that this is sort of like towards the end of his career uh before he just starts I don't know what happened to Edward Furlong's career but I don't know he was like Night of the Demons and some other straight video stuff after this um Beverly D'Angelo's career didn't really start kind of going downward after this um Ethan Supley actually went up because he landed My Name is Earl after this and then he lost a bunch of weight, and now he's still acting. So um, he's in this. Uh, uh, Elliot Gould is in this. Great actor. Fantastic. Uh, Feruza Balk 
So there's a bunch of names I'll just throw at you. Uh, you can do with that as you see fit. The director has not really done anything of significance since American History X. He's done some music videos, but nothing that's really popped. It's weird that a film that got this much coverage didn't lead to any studio trying to offer him future work. Usually a film that made this much noise would have led to a director getting an offer for a future project. That didn't happen. Um, critics are sort of lukewarm on this. It's got like a 62 Metacritic score, which is in somewhat stark contrast to the 8.5 on IMDb, which feels really high for this film, guys. And I'm, I'm really concerned as to like, who's upvoting it? Like, are we all doing it because it's, we actually think it's a profound film or are people upvoting it because they're taking the wrong message away from this? That's the thing about American History X uh, when I started to watch it and when I watched it again this time is I don't think it sells the message that it's trying to sell quite as well as it, as it thinks it does. I think it ends up being a little bit more, um, it makes too much of a case for white pride and, uh, I'm not, I'm not here for it. Uh, you could, you know, you could make the same film about really anything and, uh, make Norton like a reformed, uh, nowadays, you know, to look at in 2023, uh, he could just be like a reformed proud boy trying to like get back into his life and, and be like, no, we shouldn't have done that. And then I think the people who watch that film would not get that, that as a takeaway. There would be some people who were never part of that movement who would look at the performance and be like, wow, this is an amazing performance and amazing achievement from, and wow, it's speaking profoundly. But I think other people see it as being like, <laughs> what a loser, <laughs> you know? And I think that's what's happening with American History X. I think there are people that like it for the wrong reasons. Um, and I just don't think that Tony Kay did a good job of, of selling the narrative. Uh, as far as Edward Norton's performance, that's a tough performance, man. Uh, I, I got to credit him uh, on some level, because I don't think this is who Edward Norton is as a person. I've heard he's a difficult actor to work with, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's racist, <laughs> you know? I'm just gonna assume he's not. Uh, I just, you know, I know he has thoughts and ideas that sometimes, and he's very picky on the projects that he wants to do, and there's like a list of things, and that's why we don't necessarily see Edward Norton in everything all the time. Um, but... Uh, I don't, I, I don't think this is reflective of him as a person. And, uh, after Topher Grace, uh, was in Black Klansman playing, uh, the leader of the clan, um, I read an interview that he did where he talked about what that was like for him and how, um, he always just, he just felt so awkward and, I mean, even with Spike Lee's blessing saying, like, I need you to do this, you know, like, even with Spike Lee's blessing of, it's okay, please be racist in front of me. <laughs> he still, it just, it left him in places. It's, uh, and he just needed a lot of time to himself uh, to, to get out of character. Like, he couldn't stay, you know, in that. It's when he actually, a lot of people don't know that Toad for Grace actually like, started cutting, I think it was, like, the Lord of the Rings, like, he has his own cut of, see, like, Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit or something like that, he started recutting and re-editing those films, and, um, he just for fun, just to, as a distraction during that time period, because he needed something else to take him out of having to play that role, um, because it, it's, it's, it sucks to, to, to have to, be the one to constantly have to say those things. So I, I don't want to say Norton gets, does a bad job here because I think Norton tries uh, to deliver what he thinks is the best performance in this film. I just don't think the film lands the narrative that it thinks it lands. Yes, I did watch this without audio description, but like I said, I've had the context before I turned this film off once so technically, this is I'm, I'm not putting this down as a second look because I didn't actually finish the film the first time. I backed out of it. I was like, I don't 
this is not getting me. I, I, it was before Edward Norton ever got an Oscar nomination. I, I kind of regret it afterwards, and I kind of always been like, I should go back and watch it a little bit, which is why I'm doing it now. Like, there's always been that little part of me that's like, well, maybe I was young and maybe I didn't get it. And I still, to now, I'm just like, I'm really concerned that there, that there are people getting the wrong message from this film. I just don't think that it quite necessarily uh, hit a home run. I think it got to third base and some people thought that was, that was because they, they didn't understand the game. They thought they made, made it all the way home, but they didn't. You just got to third base. Uh, that's, that's not a, you don't get a point for that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, uh, you made the effort. Sure. Uh, some things happened. Absolutely. Um, there are some thoughts and some ideas that are being thrown around here, but when you throw the other thoughts and ideas around quite loudly and give them a platform, uh, the people who it speaks to on the other side, uh, they hear what they want to hear and they use this as what they want to use this as. And, um, that's what that is. So, uh, I, it's intentions may have been good, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So, um, Luckily for American History X, I'm not going to grade it because it didn't have audio description. And that's generally what I do when I watch a film that doesn't have audio description. And it's like, what do I miss? And I'll tell you that um, I made it far enough into the first time that I watched that curb stomping. And that was, that was about enough for me. Uh, and uh, to not have that described, to not have some of those sh more shocking moments, uh, it kind of just... I, I wouldn't, you're missing the, uh, the, the, the shock of it, uh, I guess. And then it, it ends up feeling even more like a, you know, what are we doing? Cause Furlong's narrative the whole time, it tells the story sort of like in two concurrent timelines, um, with Furlong going back and, and talking about how great his brother is and, uh, being like, oh, he's, yeah, my brother really changed the neighborhood. And we see all these instances where he's doing that and, and doing things to to get the those those who are not white out of the area. Uh, meanwhile, at the same time, it also is timed with his release from jail from an incident that happens at the beginning of the film. So you're also seeing Furlong sort of, uh, not Furlong, but Norton's character sort of reformed and trying to move especially his brother away from a life that he knows is toxic take that for what you will obviously some people really love this film 8.5 i just question how many of them love it for the right reasons uh and is this really your jam like or do you are you just voting it up because you think it's hard is in the right place um, because I think there are a whole bunch of people that would argue with you that this is, that they got the other message out of this film. I just, it doesn't work for me as a film. Um, but it evades being graded because it does not have audio description on Tubi. But I was able to talk about a film that was an Oscar nominee on Tubi. There you go. Honestly, I really wanted to watch, I was going through the list of films in La Caja Fall. Uh, came up and I was like, oh, <laughs> I even pressed play just to see if it did have an English dub and it doesn't. <laughs> I was so, I was so ready to just do an English dub of La Caja Fall because I never, I never watched La Caja Fall. I've seen The Birdcage. Um, I've, the musical La Caja Fall, but not actually the original French film on which those things are based. But I was willing to do that and nope. So American History X it was. <laughs> and uh, so my my grade is unwatchable uh, without audio description. I'm sure uh, I would have given it a grade had it. It would not be necessarily one that you would expect for a film that is an Oscar nominee. <laughs> so, However, it's not an Oscar nominee for Best Picture. It's an Oscar nominee for Best Actor and nothing else. So those are two totally different things. As the Razzie Award nominated Blonde will tell you for its Best Actress nominated performance for Ana de Armas. 
sometimes there is one shining light in a pile of shit. Um, anyway, that's it for me today. I will, uh, <laughs> I'll watch something else that, um, another streaming service that was nominated for an Oscar. Um, I have a website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on X threads or Instagram at MacTheMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It lets you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org. That's the adna.org. It lets you know who's narrating your favorite films and television series. That's it for me today. I so will, I don't know, hopefully watch something with audio description on another streaming service. Although my list of streamers that I haven't tackled yet is unlikely to have uh, narration. I don't know how to do Hulu because they don't have a single title that's been nominated for an Oscar that I've found that I haven't seen. So, uh, or even one that I haven't seen in a long time or that I haven't seen more than once. So <laughs> their list of Oscar nominees seems to be very problematic for what it is I'm trying to do right now because I'd just be celebrating something that I already like. Um, it's very weird. So <laughs> anyway... Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will see you guys on the other side.